Fellow Eagle YouTubers! I'm... I am 93 Monster Mike. And... It's another uh, figure review of NECA's... Godzilla vs. Biollante figure, or... Godzilla 1989, or... Bio-Goji. A very much anticipated figure... Okay, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a latecomer to reviewing this figure, which came out a few months ago. Excuse me for living and breathing, okay? I'm sorry. Look. At least I now have the figure, and now I can review it for you guys. Okay? Okay. So, here's the box. Beautiful poster from Godzilla vs. Biollante. I remember seeing VHS copies of this way back in the day. So, obviously, it has Glizida versus Birulante in Japanese katakana and English translation right down here. And it's obviously Godzilla fighting the rose form of Biolante, but she didn't look that uh, menacing. On the side, we got that and 65th Celebration and Shin Godzilla. Same as the other side. And on the back, we got some promo picks. Hey, wait a minute. This ro this rose drawing. I didn't notice it until now, but that but Megumi Odaka's character Miki Segusa, she drew that on a in a with a computer program thingy in the movie. I can't believe I didn't notice that until now. Great attention to detail. Uh, anyway, some uh, promo pics of the prototype from uh, San Diego Comic Con or something like that, and down there is a read up. Zoom in. And, uh, yeah. Pa pause the video now so you can read it. Okay. Toho Company Limited, Godzilla, Naka Toys, Reels, all that other stuff. At the inside of the box, we get another promo pic of Godzilla at Lake Ashino where he first fought Bailante and some of Bailante's spores. More Bailante spores in the back here. And, hey, check it out. It, this is a, it, it's it's a screenshot from the from a deleted scene in the movie where after Biollante's first defeat from Godzilla, all these flowers started blooming along the shores of Lake Ashino. Wow. Neca really does know how to make the fans happy. Now let's get into the real meat and potatoes of this. The figure itself. Yeah, that's what you guys wanted. So. The figure itself. What can I say? NECA, you knocked it way out of the ballpark with this guy. I mean, this this looks so much more like the actual Heisei Godzilla. You've improved so much over the past six years. I mean, compared to the 1994 Godzilla. Look at that. Which of these two looks more like the actual suit? Of, like, any Heisei Godzilla suit. This guy? Or this guy? Is it? It's this guy. Okay, yeah. I mean, sure, this figure is great and all, but, but this... This one looks more like the actual thing. Like, a lot of love and care went into went into sculpting this figure. I mean, the, they got the tail length right, and... It, it just blows the mind. Oh... Any little, little sculpting thing I have to kind of nitpick about is the hands. Don't get me wrong; they do, they look great and all, but I was expecting maybe the fingers to be a little bit longer, like like this guy. But oh well. But anyway, the rest of the detail of the figure: the tree bark esque scaly skin. Or linear bumps and the scales on his chest and belly and abdominal area. It all looks great. Oh, I really do love the sculpting of the figure, especially on the, the spinal plates and everything else. You know, it, he's got a heck of a good amount of weight to him. The face of the figure, though, some fans have complained that the there's something kind of off about the, the, the face's sculpt, that it doesn't exactly look 100% like the 1989 Godzilla. Well, 
I can kind of see that. But maybe it just has something to do with the eyes. Because I don't remember the eyes being this white in the movie. I remember them being more golden or maybe more yellow in color. Or maybe it has something to do with the mouth. I'm not entirely sure. But a lot of the details are definitely there. It's good enough for me. Look at that. I mean, seriously. One thing I really love about, about the Biogoji and, and the 1991 Godzilla suits in general is the arrangement of the spinal plates. Like, it's like the spinal plates being really big behind the shoulders, like kind of close to the heart area, you know? But, but that's just me. So as for articulation, jaws can open and close. So, or firing his atomic breath. We'll get into that later. Uh, the head's on a ball joint, as it is the base of the neck. So obviously, a lot of different directions with, with, with looking. The shoulders are on a ratchet-like pin and socket joint. So, great stability. The uh, elbows are on a pin and socket, uh, ratchety kind of joint as well. Wrists are on a pin and socket thing. So, yeah, they can move in and out, rotate. And the claws are on a simple uh, hinge. So they can open and close like he's going to make a punch or something. Of course, we also have the diaphragm or ab upper abdominal movement, which is basically a ball joint as well. Legs, they can move, well, they can rotate, move in and out. We also have quite a few, quite a few clicking bends at the knee and rotation. And of course, we also have a ball joint on the foot. Well, on the feet. And the and the tail is mostly composed of a lot of ball joints. So, we just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight points, not bad, not bad at all. As for the sizing, this guy is actually fairly larger than previous NECA Godzilla figures. So, let me just get a ruler out here, and you can see, as you can see, he's standing at pretty much at the six and three quarters of an inch tall. You know, standing right about here. Actually, maybe a little bit taller than that. As for head to tail, Mine. Well, obviously, if his tail outstretched, well, well, the tail like this, he's like 12 inches, but stretch it out like so, and, well, from tip to side to tip the tail, just, just at the 13 and 3 quarters of an inch mark. Pretty good size. So, based on those size dimensions, I'm not too sure if this Godzilla would would easily fit in scale with the SH Monster Arts Biolante, which unfortunately I do not have. Also, just to give you guys a better idea of how big this figure is, compared to other figures you may or may not have in your collection, here is the 2019 Godzilla from Godzilla King of the Monsters, and this guy dwarfs him when in reality, in the movie, if these guys were to be ac more ac accurately scaled, this Godzilla would be kind of closer to here. Like that. Oh, one last thing I forgot to mention. He does come with an atomic breath piece. The inside of his mouth is sculpted, so there is a hole where this part can uh, plug into, and it's also molded so the tongue and the lower... And the, jaw, and the teeth of the lower jaw fit into these little grooves and holes. So, basically, do it like that. And there you go. You can display 
this Godzilla figure firing his atomic breath. So that's a plus. Okay, so in terms of availability and price and whatnot, this figure retails at about 20 to 25 bucks. And you can pick them up at either at online, some online retail like Amazon or eBay or something. But, like me, you could get him at Target. You know, get him in person. At Target store, just go to like near the DVD section and where they sell other NECA figures. Easy as that. There, it, NECA did also release a, a variant of this figure that is covered in basically Biolante's radioactive acidic sap. So he's basically got like, almost like he has green slime or Nickelodeon slime covering about this much of, of his body. Eh. But this figure, it is definitely a must-have for any Godzilla collector. Especially for those who do love the NECA figures. So, get it while you can, because unfortunately NECA has lost the light since to, for the Godzilla figures. Will they regain the license? Hard to say. But enough about me rambling. So, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to hit the th thumbs up button if you liked it. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And feel free to also subscribe to my channel for more content. So, until next time, this has been 93 Monster Mike. Wale!